Hello everyone, Mr. Ben again. I'm going to share something that's had a great impact on my life. I have a condition known as cerebral palsy. This is something that has impacted my life since birth. I was a premature baby. I was born three months early. Because of that, I only weighed two pounds. Needless to say, my body wasn't fully developed, and this caused a lot of complications. I was in the hospital, hooked up on oxygen and in an incubator for about 24 hours. Luckily, I was able to survive, and the doctors said I would be able to live a pretty productive life. What they didn't tell me was there was going to be a lot of implications down the road. So one of the biggest implications of the disability is my walking. Kind of walk with a limp per se. It's gotten better over the years but it was definitely a lot worse. In my early years I walked a lot with a crouch. So to put it in perspective a lot of people walk heel toe and when they hit the ground, their hair goes down. Because of the disability, my feet were caved in. I couldn't stand straight up. That's why I had the crouch, because my muscles were so tight inside my legs. So I still learned how to walk, but it wasn't conventional. As I continued to get older, uh, the doctors mentioned that I was probably going to need an operation uh, to be able to fix this. What they didn't say was the severity of the operation. So I got the operation done in seventh grade, in the summer of seventh grade. It was a very massive operation. Uh, what wound up happening is uh, they basically broke um, both of my legs. Um, when I woke up in the operating room, um, I was in cast from my hips all the way down to my ankles, and there was a bar in between uh, the cast. So basically, I couldn't move. I woke up, and I remember feeling like I was paralyzed. Uh, I remember hearing the, the nurse saying, hi. How you doing? And I remember looking down at my body, and it's like, I'm all in a hard blue cast. What's, what's going on here? Um, so after that, um, I was in the hospital um, for about five days as I slowly started to uh, recover. Um, when they did the operation, uh, they also wound up putting uh, plates and screws um, into both of my hips. Uh, because that was something that they had operated on as well. They had rotated uh, both of my hips outward, as well as all the work they did uh, inside my legs. So what they wound up doing inside my legs um, was they lengthened uh, my hamstrings and they released a lot of uh, tension in my feet. Um, so because of that, um, I had a lot of uh, muscle spasms during the initial recovery. Uh, so a muscle spasm is pretty much when your muscles get tight and then they, they suddenly relax and they kind of do it uncontrollably. Um, so I was in a lot of pain uh, initially as the spasm started to um, come and go. So I was on a lot of uh, medication uh, during my time um, at the hospital. But once um, that got under control, I started um, to be on the road to recovery. Now, obviously, I wasn't able to walk for uh, a long period of time until my body you know, fully healed from the operation. Um, so basically, I had to learn how to walk all over again. Uh, but that meant I had to be in a wheelchair for a while. Um, I had to go to therapy uh, a bunch of times uh, throughout the summer. Um, and I had to learn how to start walking again uh, with a walker um, and braces. Um, now obviously 
this was done at a very young age, so I was able to uh, recover, you know, according to the doctor's plan. But that didn't mean um, it was easy. Uh, when I first learned how to take steps again, uh, I had to really be like a baby. Um, I couldn't really take too many steps at a time uh, because my balance wasn't there. Um, I had to really teach my body how to get coordinated all over again. And a lot of times I, I didn't have the strength uh, that I needed to, you know, keep myself up. You know, I would kind of wobble and fall down a lot and then I'd have to, you know, get back up again. But thankfully, due to uh, a variety of different stretching exercises and the, the therapy sessions, um, I was able to eventually uh, work my way back to uh, full strength. So, you know, today uh, I definitely walk a lot better uh, than I did um, in the past. Uh, but, you know, the disability still presented a lot of other um, challenges, uh, especially in, in school um, and in the workforce. Uh, in school, the biggest challenges um, were, were definitely uh, reading, uh, writing, and, and public speaking. Um, I had to get uh, various physical therapy uh, during school, as well as occupational therapy. Uh, that helped me a lot with uh, things such as uh, tying shoes, uh, putting paper clips on different things. So pretty much anything that involved uh, fine motor skills um, I was getting assistance with uh, during that time. And then I also had to wear uh, leg braces until my, my legs became strong enough to uh, walk on their own. So pretty much what the braces looked like, um, it was a hard plastic um, that the orthodontist used the machine on to basically uh, take a mold of my leg and, and shape it into a brace. Uh, so that way when you put the brace on my leg, my leg fit inside it. And then there were Velcro straps uh, to make sure that my foot you know, was strapped in place. And the brace provided uh, the additional support that I needed um, as I was learning how to walk again. And then uh, the other big thing was because I was off my feet for such a long period of time during the recovery, uh, I needed to build my stamina and endurance back up. I struggled to, you know, pretty much get up and down stairs in the hallway a lot. Uh, so I had to use a walker a lot. Um, that was definitely tough at times, uh, especially when we went to like gym and recess and we were doing a lot of moving around. I couldn't do it, right? I had to, I had to sit out or I had to take a lot of breaks just because I, I wasn't physically able to do what we were doing. Um, that was very tough. Um, I definitely enjoyed gym. That was my favorite subject. I definitely enjoyed playing a lot of sports outside, um, but I kind of had to take a back seat um, until I was ready to fully engage in those um, activities. And then with regards to uh, my overall uh, academic development, um, I had something called an IEP plan, uh, which really tried to focus on specific goals for me in school. Um, as I was recovering, um, and the teachers and the, and the therapists uh, realized that you know certain tasks for me uh, weren't going to be done as efficient as others, uh, so they gave me an option for uh, pass and fail. And as long as I was able to do them um, on a limited basis, um, they would allow me to you know proceed to the next grade and whatnot. So. I'm happy to say that, you know, through all the trials and tribulations uh, throughout my early years, I was still able to keep, you know, a good head on my shoulders. Uh, there was obviously a lot of um, discrimination that was directed my way with regards to uh, stares, um, people making, you know, negative comments about me um, and who I was. But, you know, I, I learned that, you know, this is just something that I'm going to have to deal with uh, pretty much throughout my entire life and it's really about how I respond to it um, and how I see myself that'll really dictate you know where I'm able to go. Uh, so as I progressed into middle school um, I still wore um, the braces um, but I definitely had gotten a lot of my mobility back. Um, I was still doing a lot of stretching exercises um, on my own to maintain my mobility and then when I got to high school uh, sophomore year, I told myself I wanted to see where I was at. 
Uh, so I stopped wearing the braces. Um, so I, I was walking on my own. I was able to go upstairs. I was able to participate in you know, various activities. And I proved a lot uh, to myself that I had finally gotten to a stage where I felt like I could live you know, the best I could. <clears throat> there was always going to be things that I maybe weren't going to be able to do as well as everybody else. But as long as I felt satisfied, you know, that's what matters. Um, so fast forward you know, to college. I was uh, completely independent. I was able to um, take care of myself, uh, live on campus on my own, um, be involved in a, a lot of different uh, activities uh, on campus. And then when I transitioned um, into the, the working world, um, obviously there was still continued uh, discrimination that was you know, directed uh, at me uh, from various organizations and, and people. Um, but to, to my credit, um, I never let that stop me. Um, I was able to obtain jobs. Um, I definitely had to you know, put in my time uh, to be able to obtain certain positions um, with better pay. Um, but that was all a learning experience um, in itself. Um, I, I learned a lot about how to deal with um, adversity uh, and people that were dealing with various uh, social economic issues. Um, and I feel like I was really able to kind of use my personal experiences um, as, a, as a platform um, to not only uh, be a role model uh, for others, but to prove that, uh, you know, just because you're dealing with, you know, certain circumstances that people may not know about, you know, you can still be a good person. Um, it doesn't take anything when we're talking about uh, kindness uh, to make a difference in the world. And I think that's why I really got involved um, in the nonprofit and educational sectors, uh, because I felt like I was really uh, making a difference um, in the terms of children families um, in the community. So um, I'm originally from Windsor, Connecticut. Uh, that's where I was born and raised. I have two twin brothers. Uh, one of my main interests growing up was definitely basketball. Um, I've been very fortunate to coach basketball at various different levels. Um, this includes high school, where I won a state title. Um, I had a feature story done on me by the Hartford Current, and I was also interviewed by various local TV stations as well. After high school, I transitioned over to college. I attended Mitchell College uh, in New London, Connecticut, where I majored in sports management, and I was also part of the men's basketball program as a student coach. In college, I was fortunate enough to win the first conference title in school history as a senior and on the academic side I was very fortunate to be able to graduate as valedictorian of my graduating class. After graduation I decided I wanted to attend graduate school. I went to Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut. I decided to get my master's in leadership. I was the youngest one to attend this graduate program in its first year of existence. The program itself lasted for two years. It was eight week classes with a week off in between. Very fortunate to say I was able to complete grad school in two years. I graduated with a Master of Arts in Leadership with a 4.0 GPA in high honors. After grad school, I moved on to the working world. Initially, I thought I wanted to work in college athletics. I was able to gain a lot of good experience in college athletics. I started off at the University of St. Joseph as the head team manager for the men's basketball program under Hall of Fame head coach Jim Calhoun in 2018. That year, the first year of existence, we won the conference championship with a team for the freshmen. We also had a documentary done on the program by ESPN called The Calhoun Project. After that, I moved into an administrative role in the athletic office where I served as a sports information assistant. 
Here, I was responsible for the game day operation of Seven Sports and updating our social media outlets and websites accordingly. After St. Joe's, I moved on to the University of Hartford. Here at the University of Hartford, I started out as the community liaison for the men's basketball program. I was responsible for all of our community service and outreach efforts. Then I moved into more of an administrative role with the team where I served as support staff. In this role, I was responsible for recording defensive statistics during games to help the coaching staff with individual and team performance. In our second year at UHART, we were fortunate enough to win the conference championship. The year before, we were not able to compete due to COVID. When we won the conference championship, there was a big celebration in the city. After UHART, I moved on to the nonprofit sector. My nonprofit sector started out at the YMCA in the Greater Hartford area. I had multiple roles with the YMCA. I started out as a member services representative, so I was responsible for a lot of customer service, daily operations, and promoting and marketing all of our programs. Then I moved into the youth and teen department, where I served as a program director, working with ages 8 to 18 in terms of academic enrichment activities and support. Our curriculum focused a lot on reading, writing, and public speaking. Then I moved into the sports and recreation department while I helped coordinate the day-to-day -day operations of all of our various sports programs, including basketball, volleyball, and soccer. After I was at the Greater Hartford, I transitioned into the educational sector. I worked in the school systems in various student support services roles and running various before and after care programs. On average, these programs had between 90 and 120 students. I was also very fortunate enough to be able to do summer programming as well. The summer programming focused a lot on the acronym STEAM, which was science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We did a lot of social emotional learning as well. After working in the educational sector, I returned to the nonprofit side. I took a role as membership director down at the Nogatuk YMCA. It was during this time that I began to realize that I wanted my career to be in an organization where I felt that I could continue to serve others on a daily basis by being able to offer them a variety of programs, services, and initiatives that would enhance their overall academic, social, and leadership potential. It was after I came to this consensus that I returned to the before and after care sector as a program director. But as I was working with the children, I realized that my heart was really back with the YMCA. So another opportunity came around as a program director back at the downtown YMCA. I was fortunate enough to get the position and I started there back in April of 2023. When I took the role here at downtown, I realized that the pandemic had really caused some harm to this particular location. I was tasked with hiring a bunch of new staff members and trying to restore a lot of the community vibrations that had taken place. I worked very collaboratively with the staff to bring back a lot of various community events. Some of the meaningful events that were put on were a member appreciation day, a Hispanic heritage celebration, and a holiday celebration. The Y was very good to me throughout my time. I was fortunate enough to receive various employee performance awards. The first one I received was the Perfect Presence Award. Uh, this really focused on my professionalism and my ability to build meaningful relationships and connections with staff, members, and the community. The next award I received from the Y was the Unsung Hero Award. 
Uh, this really focused on an individual who went above and beyond their daily job duties to make a positive impact in the community. And the most recent one I received was called the High Impact Performance Award, which really focused on my ability to deliver various trainings and workshops to diverse populations of people. I really enjoyed my time at the Y, being able to do a lot of different things, work my way up into various leadership roles, and build a lot of meaningful relationships with the staff, the members, and the surrounding community. I also faced a lot of resistance in my career journey. It took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with my life, what organization it would be at, and what was the right role for myself. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I could take the next step. This caused me to jump from a lot of different jobs not really staying for long periods of time. As I tried to figure out my career, I realized that I was really hurting my opportunities to grow. So I told myself I really needed to take a step back and self-reflect and figure out how to get to the top. I did this by doing a lot of observation and a lot of collaborating with staff. And I feel like through a lot of our conversations, we were able to really create a solid foundation that we were able to use to not only benefit ourselves, but the surrounding community. My advice to other people trying to figure out the next step in their journeys, trust the process. You may have an initial idea of what you want to do, but it may not play out the way you envisioned for a variety of reasons. Continue to believe in yourself. Keep faith. Always keep your options open because you never know when the next opportunity will come about. And when it does, trust your instincts, right? Use the resources that you have around you to succeed. And if you have the right vision and the right pieces in play, you can figure out how to set the solid foundation for success.